Song was passed, hopping down, cause feeling's not an option, and dad is not a noun, not at all. <laughs> welcome, welcome to another episode of Dad is Not a Noun. My name is Ishmael, changing the narrative for men of color and fatherhood, as well as changing the narrative on the things I care about. And today, I have the returning champion back with me again. We had an in-depth conversation last time he was on. He just talked about the ugly parts of war. And he's back again with me again just to talk about more of the stories that he uh, he dealt with in war and how he was able to heal through those trauma. I have the one and only, the good brother, the veteran, just an amazing brother. Just a, I call him the healing brother because he got so many tools in his bags to help those help people that's in need, that's dealing with trauma. The one and only, Antoine, brother, thank you for coming on. How you doing, brother? Thank you for that excellent introduction. I actually felt better about myself <laughs> than normal. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad to be here, man. I'm I'm all I'm excited. I'm excited to connect. I'm excited to reach. I'm, I'm excited for people to hear what the truth actually actually means to me. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, you know my next question. How's your heart at this moment? My heart is fluttering. I have okay. feel butterflies. I feel butterflies, man. I ate one good time today. I'm I'm energized. I'm all I'm all circulating. I'm good, man. <laughs> and and it's good to hear that you're in a good place because I would just want to tap into like the dark side of humanity. I know we tapped into a little bit, but like what does that what does that mean to you, the dark side of humanity? The dark side of humanity, I like to think of it as somewhat of a tunnel. Um, humanity as a whole is the forming of that tunnel and we could either be on one end obviously looking into it but still outside of it we could either be inside of it which there's a whole level of in being inside of that too but then there's the other side and some people turn their back on it and so I, I, it brings it into a better picture in my mind when I think of it as a, a tunnel you know like one of those children's sliding boards or something, you know, the big tubes. And once you come out the other end, especially not expecting to, once you come out the other end, there lies another door, another choice. And ultimately you can either keep going into the light and basically disappear from everybody that's in humanity, or you can wait there, or you can wait there right at the level where it's, back inside of the tunnel like the opening you know you can just wait there for the people to actually see the direction that they need to take and hopefully my face is on the other end waiting to smile them on through you know 
So no. when it comes to when it comes to darkness, man, it's it's really just about how much light is a person willing to try to see. And you know, you can't see nothing in the dark. So it's it's you you, you either need to be the light or try fight like hell to try to reach it. You know. So and that's kind of the gist of the entire uh, deployment in Iraq for all of us. It was trying to get through what we already understood as darkness at that time. I was young, 19, you know? Um, so even then I didn't really get it. It was all new to me. Only thing I could relate to is the fact that, you know, stray bullets, that's really it, you know? And, but once, once, once that face to face came, it just started looking more and more like me and that the things that were happening in Iraq, the bad things, it was a reflection of everybody else's start. And because of that, made me look at mine, realize how different it was to theirs. And like I said, the tax, like I said before, the taxi situation, that was based on their feelings on what they did. That's how I knew I was at least having human feelings, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, that, and that was just the first three months. As soon as things, things calmed down from the uh, initial invasion, we had to switch gears and go into a civil affairs mode. And keep in mind, I'm infantry. All we do is get on the ground and just start shooting stuff. Wow. And so we're, we're doing civil affairs things, controlling the uh, fuel station, well, basically the gas station. And, you know, people wouldn't like it. People would get rowdy at us because we were stopping them from getting gas, feeding their families move on further is switch from gas to the water treatment facility. Now it's looking less and less like war, but these things keep happening. People keep popping shots off of rooftops. I mean, uh, Saddam Hussein's sons, when we took them out, it was summertime. It was July, August, something like that. And as soon as that happened, all of a sudden we just kept getting shot at from inside of our little corridor. And we've been in this town for a minute. They, they knew who we were. They just didn't like the fact that that happened. And it told me that these people defend him like he's true to, true to the people. Right. How outsiders saw him might not have been accurate. You know, right. and so I'm starting, I'm looking at, at their behavior and it's almost the more, or excuse me, the less we try to control their own way of living Right. The less they, the more they left us alone, and mm -hmm. people stopped getting hurt. We actually started integrating, you know, getting chocolates from kids and and just hanging out with the locals. Right. Meanwhile, you know, the water facility was still being taken on, and we actually had to live in this place with civilian Iraqis. And you know, they had their opinions. Civilians always have their opinions. Yes. Even the and I, and I wouldn't doubt that they saw their own darkness, but. We, we were, uh, what, did they, what did they call us? Um, infidels. We were the infidels. You know what I mean? The rebels that stopped the way of life that was working to change it and push on their own agenda. <laughs> you know? And just being a part of this, um, you know, it, it all made me reflect into how does this affect me? How does this affect the way that I feel about it? You know what I mean? Like, how does this happening look to me as I feel right. as a third party almost, you know, is there was a lot of third party situations through my perception and that, that helped, that helped a lot. And, and, and like, you know, I think one of the things when you try to get out of the darkness is when you find that light is being honest with yourself. Um, can you just like tap into like the things that you saw that was not right or like your superiors told you what to do? told you things to do, mm -hmm. but you felt like it wasn't the right thing to do. It was a good one. I got one. Yeah, that was, that was almost immediately. Um, so we had a translator, you know, he was obviously Iraqi. Uh, Muhammad was his name. He's actually on my Instagram somewhere. Um, weird guy. Uh, he really tried to seek our approval a lot, which I didn't know that that was a pet peeve of mine then. So I was just like, this guy's sketchy. Okay, here go racism right here. 
Right. Oh, this guy, this guy is sketching me out. Like, why is this guy always here? Why is he getting this golden airsoft AK so we can play in the desert? You know, why is he doing these things? So I didn't trust. Him. So now trust becomes an issue. Obviously, forgiveness is one of them. Um, I feel that trust is a part of forgiveness, just like compassion and all that, which at that time with that guy, I didn't have any of it. Right. And again, forced me to have to reflect like, OK, well, I remember how people treated me for being brown. I look around this country, I see 10% of the people here darker than I am, right. curlier hair than I am, taller than I am. So I'm just thinking to myself, what, what makes this guy so different? You know what I mean? And it was the approval part. Me acknowledging, or excuse me, not acknowledging, but confirming an order that I didn't see, that I didn't see right by my leadership, I just didn't do it, man. I just didn't do it like that. That was from before till the end of army time. Like I, I didn't do anything that I didn't feel that was necessary. And it was, and this is going against the government, you know, yeah. like I, I got in trouble a lot. I got in trouble overseas more. So, I mean, I was, I was promotable. Like I was going to get promoted to Sergeant E5. Yeah. Um, by the time August came, and because they didn't promote me over there, I was just like, they just wanted to leave me hanging, basically. And I've seen them do that to other E4s. Mm -hmm. So basically, I was like, screw this. You know, like, you know, I'm, this war, I'm just, I'm just literally going to just do for the people. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the people started liking me. They started calling me Blade. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, because I was uh, African American, some of some of the kids would call me Abu Shmeta, which okay. I'm guessing there was some context of of a of a boogeyman or something like right. that. You know, it's people see these things like people see it; they just call it different things. For me, right. I call it the shadow, but those people let me know every step of the way if there was something dark about me, and I couldn't help but see it because I was there walking right. hand in hand with it, you know? So it was, it was getting out of it and, and trying to follow orders didn't come together. It didn't mesh. So right. it was one or the other, you know, if, if, if I defied him, especially if it was a higher up Sergeant, like, like a squad leader or higher, I was definitely going to be doing pushups, eating sand immediately. Wow. So wow. sweating to death. <laughs> Oh my God, yo! Yeah, but you know, just just talk about that 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 brother because I know there were situations mm -hmm. where you know you told a story how you know you were showing the reality what's going on 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 your Facebook channel, and you know the, your your brotherhood didn't like that. Yeah, that the Matrix battle. You know what I mean? That that was um that had to be my first battle in the Matrix as far as multiple people. Uh, I was telling the truth, like I am now, you know, and I did say some things that probably touched their ego because I know how to do that. Right. And so, I mean, quote for quote, you know, if it, if it wasn't for me and what I did, nobody would have these happy lives with their families and children that they're flaunting around on Facebook. Right. It's like, but this was after my, my dude, my, my, like, my homie, you know what right. I mean? Like he was, he, if everybody else was out of my life, this was the guy that I thought I had at least an ounce of blood to compare to with. Right. And he just pretty much threw me out like it was garbage and told his wife to, to deal with telling me to go away. Wow. And the thing is, I wasn't even near them. I was in Las Vegas and they were in Arizona. Right. So, so, big, so the brotherhood, it, it's just not there. It's just, it, it's not there because, I mean, I mean, I'd like to say it was selfishness, but people have these obligations that they hold so close, but they don't realize the limitations that they put on themselves by doing that. Right. All for nobility, all for being noble and honorable, right. you know, and, and all the things, discipline, all right. the things that the military values. <laughs> And ultimately, somebody couldn't be the slightest bit honorable, the right. slightest bit disciplined, 
and the, the, just the, just integral to me right? as the person that shared the same experience. Right. It was almost like I was overseas by myself once COVID hit because it was two months after COVID. Wow. Yeah. So they basically attacked me. Um, the guy that I was actually roommates with, um, Rodriguez, I went to strip clubs with him all the time. Like we were pretty tight too. Right. He he came at me the hardest because right. he had the most to defend. This right. was the person that said he 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 was like me. He didn't ha he he got the Fort Bragg and he was done. He was over. It. Right. I'm talking about he wasn't even in for longer than six months. He was just done. And so he pretty much skated through the three years that he had. I had four. But when he got out, apparently the first nine months he was out, he couldn't hack it. He wow. couldn't hack being in the civilian world, which was the same world he left. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay. So he goes off, basically tries to build his life and put all these uh, credentials in front of it. And then I, f I find out he ended up joining the military again. Mm -hmm. And going along like nothing ever happened. You know, there's a little bit of betrayal here because right. there was no communication. Right. There was no communication and it was false. His right. whole belief system was skewed. Right. And I and don't get me wrong, a kid can make a difference. But a kid could also make me get out there and sell two thousand dollar items to people. Yeah. To make that happen. I don't have to go back in the military. Nobody does. Right. Why they do that? They want to hide. Ish. They want to hide. They real the veterans. All they want to do is hide. I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm too used to doing that. You know right. that was that was my childhood hiding yeah. from everybody. Right. So it's it's you know there's no bond. There's no bond. All all I know, all we know, is that somebody was in the war zone together, and you know that's it. The war was over. Right. They don't really understand the depth of what the war even meant overall. So it's for for me to be able to talk about the war that I the way that I do, and from the point point of view that I see it, it it just didn't set right with their current reality, right. or even the ones they made up for themselves over time. So they lo they lost the brotherhood once they decided to change their reality to an illusion and dream away. Right. So, Basically. So you so you, you, you for for what for 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 what you're you're saying is like they they they're just living this mirage to just live a healthy unquote healthy life mm -hmm. just to hide you know the trauma you know they dealt with on the battlefield all the dark hide it from their kids hide it from their family people like me that don't have that obligational hold those people got to be quiet because it'll disturb something right. it'll stir something up to the point that now people have to see something that somebody didn't talk about to them before now we're talking about honesty right now we're talking about honesty so basically any veteran that has a child and they could look them in the eye and say remember that time i told you about war if that kid don't say yes they're a fucking liar right. full through and through because they lied to the next generation they lied to the meaning of life Right. And I don't have any kids, Ish. You know that. Right. And that's how I feel about it. I feel strongly about the next generation. Right. And right. the lies that people tell themselves are just bleeding off on it. And I'm sorry. I'll stir a pot all day just to make it clear. Just right. to make that water clear. Right. And and I think that's the one thing is that you have a clear conscience. You know that you know this is what you lived, and you be and you're being brutally honest of what you you went through um mm -hmm. but yeah just talk about because the one thing i have a hard um thing dealing with because i've never been in war i've never been on the battlefield is the justification of killing another person even mm -hmm. though you know you're in the heat of war um you know we 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 create this bad guy good guy dynamic when it comes to war but just but i still can't get my head on just the justification of just taking another life mm -hmm. and just moving on with your life like it never happened. Man, I know there was a lot of addiction for the guys in my platoon specifically. And this was while we were in the army. 
Um, I had never, t- I never touched anything. I didn't have weed until I got out, but they had drug past drug history. And mm-hmm. for them, that, that seemed to be the justification. But, mm-hmm. f- but for me, actually someone who's actually looking into it, you know, not afraid, justifying, I don't know. That word just automatically says we have to defend something that we don't want somebody to know about. Mm. Wrong, of course. I mean, if, if there's anything to label as wrong, using the word is already the bad step. Right. Because, you know, just is doing something righteous. Right. So justification is going to have to put a suit of being just over something. I hope this explains it clearly because I'm. this is the first time I'm even speaking this. Okay. And and so when when it's just justifiable, either the person's conscious has let it clear or people's reaction to it. Support your troops has cleared it. So it could either be the person justifying it themselves or the the validation or even the the approval right. of the outside world, people's bumper stickers, stuff like that, telling them thanks for your support. And just it's just sleeves of, of, of skin of justification going over what's really wrong. I mean, mm-hmm. America is known for this. <laughs> and then it's not surprising that the mentality of the people under that will have to deal with that. I just wasn't about to deal with it. I had too many skins on the, to, to begin with. I had to be so many different people to so many different types of people. And, mm-hmm. and this was just in, in my platoon. There were so, there's so many different people. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, I was one out of two black people. One out of two black people in a freaking infantry company. And <laughs> I don't know how they don't get it. I, I don't know how, and I hate to think that way because they will. Mm-hmm. But then again, the way they're going, the way they're defending, they're probably not. Mm-hmm. So I, if I had to say anything to wrapping anyone's head around it that couldn't understand it, I would say just understand that there are people that are running free that will defend at all times. That's one thing I would want people to understand. They don't have to do it. They don't have to be that person. All they have to make sure of is that they're connected to somebody who understands. That's it. Simple. You know, I mean, people have their own fantasies when they do these things. Obviously, most of them, 99% of them get locked up. Okay. If they're caught, Um, some of them keep doing it until they get caught. Right. But that's because they are so ashamed of what's actually in there that they have all these serialistic tendencies wrapped around it the justification right. oh it's right. a woman i'm supposed to love a woman but i'm not supposed mm-hmm. to love a woman like that and raping her shit like that you know what right. i mean like this is what this is and it still doesn't make it more sickening because ultimately you got the bad thing in the center and then you got all the justification that 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 and that person has done to, right. to hide it from themselves from the world i mean right. I can talk about that all day because it takes that to understand it. My favorite show is Criminal Minds, for God's sake. There's a reason, no, a you know? Yeah. You, you, you show me a documentary on any serial killer and I will listen to them be a serial killer and completely understand what's going through. Meanwhile, yeah. not one person in those courtrooms could even fathom. That's why most of them walk around arrogant. That's why most of them look at the judge and say, screw you, I meant to do it. Because ultimately, they don't understand, and all they're going to end up doing is feeding off of the judge's fear or people's uncomfortable feelings and all. They feed off that. Me, I do everything I can to keep people from f- feeling uncomfortable, but honesty is uncomfortable. But you know, and I think, and I and I totally agree with that. I think honesty is is important because it it it, it opens Pandora box of. Uh, of reality. And I think a lot of people don't want to kind of talk about that, especially like when you like, like I think one thing that a lot of um, people who serve, they don't want to talk about it. They want to kind of hide it is that, you know, 
you know, the military is a job program. Uh, I would say a, a good percentage of are them they go into there because they feel like they have no other option. Mm-hmm. So they serve because you know they pay for school, you know, mm-hmm. you know, this is an opportunity to better their life. Sounds and good, so, but that sounds like that sounds like the skin of justification to me. Yeah, you see what I mean? Justification, yeah, yeah. And you they, they plan it out so well. <laughs> and, and, and and you you and, 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 and you don't want to mess that up. You know, because I mean? if you if you if you mess that up, that means that everything you work for is going to be gone. Yeah, especially if somebody else does it, that makes it twice as bad. Right. I am the bad guy. You know, I am. I'm just comfortable with it because I'm not being bad. Right. You know, I mean, all right, let's Batman, for instance. Right. You know what I mean? That whole saga. Um, you know, New York City hated Spider-Man. Heroes, I don't have a hero complex anymore, I'll tell you that much. Because it's the most, it's probably the highest form of ego that a person could could muster up. And so, yeah, (laughs) it's the hero thing is not a good look in my mind. And because people are being called heroes, oh, the COVID thing, like nurses being called heroes, and they're making it seem like they're actually warring, more skin. More skin. We need to make these people okay with something bad happening. So, but I mean, I'm okay with it and I have no skin. Everything that was on my insides is on the outside now. That little old me that was insecure and hiding from the world, it's just in a little ball behind my shadow in an open cage because I don't have to lock it anymore. You know? And that's, that's when I knew I had something. That's when I knew Awaken Heal and had to mean that. You know, that's, 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 that's just what I'm on. That's the path that I have to take now. You know, I can't just go, Oh, I love you. You could, you want to be my wife. I can't do those things. I can't, it, it's not going to happen because ultimately <laughs> the person that's counterpart to me has to almost equally be as strong. Right. And, you know, people have their moments of weakness, you know, right. I have, and, I have um, to be strong. No, and you have to be, and just talk about like like your near death experience and how that c- kind of put you on that journey because mm-hmm. you know you not you know you didn't just have one you had like several. Almost well, see the, the the reason why it, it 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 seems like it was repetitive is because it was set in stone almost mentally in stone mm-hmm. when I was sitting in basic training that first month. Because mm. once the Twin Towers went down, the drill sergeant was just like, are y'all ready to die, private? Mm. And so that right there, that was the near. That was the near death part. But the confrontational part, like you can be near somebody without disturbing anything, but there was a confrontational level that was beyond mm. near. Right. And so that, that confrontational part is what people don't generally come into contact with and Ultimately, my thought process within those moments was just, I'm not going to back down. I'm not Mm going to run. I'm not going to formulate a reason to have to get sent home. That's the only thing that was really running. Um, I, I, and and they call this the military programming, but, and excuse my language, but I didn't want to be considered a P, a, a, Mm -hmm. a vagina. I'll keep it real because because once I known that that was already my possibly my end, it it just got to the point where it was like, well, what am I going to do to make it not be that? Wow. You know, and every time something popped up as an opening, an option, I had to have taken it, whether it was pulling the trigger, whether it was pulling up my my vision scope thing, whether it was running when I shouldn't have been walking. Right. You know, when they started shooting with when Saddam Saddam's sons got taken up, you know, yeah. like they just started shooting. So it's like I could walk now and, and just be sneaky or whatever, be infantry, or I can haul my ass over with the freaking machine guns and hide behind them. And yeah. so, you know, between what to do when the confrontation starts and being close to it, it's right. definitely a, it's a really thick line. Um, You know, you can be near death all your life. Yeah. But like we are, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. you see, yeah. yeah, 
And and I think what's crazy is that you know you know we live in like we have people that we look up to we have mentors and things like that and when you have a sergeant mm -hmm. telling you like prepare to die you know again it goes back to that word of justification <laughs> you know what I'm saying it does, it, it, it does. That, that for him saying that it justifies the actions on the battlefield exactly that hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't even happened yet you know so the reality and illusion dude i mean if there's anything there's a wall between them and people are choosing one side to the other with no windows and and so i just i mean every now and then i'll pop through the window but i, I live i live on the unseen side because as long as there's somebody watching nobody can say that they they couldn't have known right. you know they couldn't have seen it that's why such an introverted isolated person like myself try that's why i try to be out there that's why i try you know it doesn't matter what the hearts do on on social media it doesn't matter what the comment sections do right. i want that shit to be implanted in this so-called system on a level on a level that they did it to start this entire illusion Right. You know what I mean? Because it all ends up being an illusion in the end because somebody else is going to perceive something different. Yeah. But the more undeniable and the conviction, that's that's one thing I noticed about me that changes minds. And that's yeah. that's my conviction. I'm very, very freaking convicted, almost to a to an angry level. Right. Because my feelings run so deep with the things that I've already know to be so called right or wrong. I know the great. And the gray part of it is the part that needs to get explained the most and the loudest. Right. So the fact, so the fact that my entire platoon could turn on me and me not skip a beat and continue on writing what mm -hmm. I write, talking what I talk and getting distracted whenever I feel like getting distracted, you know, and I consider business as a distraction. It's almost a hobby for me. Like it's fun. Right. And because because it takes so much self awareness to actually go that entrepreneur route, right. there's darkness within that. There's right. like oh, and it's mostly ego for the most part, you know. But you know, it's all it's all the same beast. It's all us, you know. And and just I just wish everybody would be more willing to confront their own demons because they are going to manifest and they do turn into an entity. And there are people having dreams about them. And they will take over. And, I mean, ask the guys that killed that's in jail. Yeah. You know? And it's crazy, too, is how we're so infatuated with serial killers. Like, mm -hmm. just their, their their mindset of, you know, why do they do that? Like, we, we, mm -hmm. we're, we're so curious of trying to f try to decode, like, what happened mm -hmm. in their life to make them yeah. do what, you know, what they did and yeah. i think that's that's important because like you said we all had that in us mm -hmm. it's just it takes um to trigger that trigger it trigger it and then we react to it and it becomes something that we're so it's natural like mm -hmm. like almost like basically like waking up brushing your teeth yeah that's what they call it's refining their thing. skill yeah. yeah when they start normalizing it like it's just a task on the list that's when the, that's let's just call the FBI. That's when they say he's refining the skill and all that stuff. And ultimately being comfortable with it has to be a skill, but not to keep doing it. Like there has to be something peeled away from that person in order for them to really stop letting it be such an impulsive control right. part of it, you know? And honestly, okay, check this out. Okay. Let's just think of, let's think about all those guys in jail, all the, Every black man that you can think of right. that's that's possibly in jail for murder or even attempted. Right. That's yeah, attempted murder. Let's do that. All those in there, what do you think is gonna help them to change? Just off the top of your head, no, it doesn't matter if it's a shallow or superficial or deep, it doesn't matter. Just what do you think? I I to me, I think personally, for them to change is to um, uh, uh, create a space where they feel comfortable because I feel mm -hmm. that 
they're dealing with so much trauma mm -hmm. and and so creating this space where they can feel vulnerable just mm -hmm. to open up because i think that's yeah. the one thing that's that hinders our community as first especially for black men is that uh mm -hmm. it's forced down our throat to be this masculine bravado tough guy mm-hmm now this is all about the individual right here that right. you're answering by. Yeah. But but, but if, if you were to ask me what a therapist is, I would have said exactly what you said. Mm. See, that therapist is the embodiment. And if you can't embody that that client or that that patient or anything, if you can't embody that, right. somebody's wasting their money. Yeah. Somebody's mm -hmm. wasting their time. Somebody's wasting their effort. Because that person isn't in jail with that person. Yeah. for the same thing so how is that person actually going to do everything you said it's right. it's all up to that one person that holds the shadow yeah. that space has to be created that call it a shrine call it call it a dwell call it whatever they want but right. it's going to have to be something that doesn't feed the beast yeah. that's it that's it that's it I mean, you, you come in, like, I, I live in this, it's basically a shed in the backyard. It's pretty fucking big. Yeah, and it's huge. you walk in there, you wouldn't even think you were inside of a, a veteran's living area. Right. It looks like somebody's worshipping the universe in some weird way. But there's all sorts of connections, Japanese connections. All that stuff is connecting, which make up the space. Yeah. So, so and, and, you know, I don't really care too much for physical things. Right. But if people need it to get a hold of a beast, then right. get as physical as possible mm -hmm. if you need. You know what I'm saying? And so it's 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 really not about the onlooker's opinion of it. It truly is about how vulnerable yeah. that person actually was. Yeah. Which which is probably why most murderers seem so hard. You know, mm -hmm. kind of we all do it. We all try to harden up when there's something soft showing. Yeah. It, it, it it makes them almost feel like we do, but we haven't acted on impulse in that way. Right. Whether it be morals or just straight up understanding that you just can't do that freely. Right. You know, it it's it goes so deep, but overall creating that space, man, just making sure that there's time to look at it. Right. Not time to get away from it. Right. I barely mm -hmm. listen to music now. I have to, I like, I listen to music probably like three, four times a month right. because I think, because I think of it as an escape. Right. And, and I'm not trying to escape because that's what causes the shadow to eat us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I agree so, with you a hundred percent with that because it's like, you're, you're not dealing with the issue. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's still and there. It's yeah. And you're escaping, and, no, but no matter what, it's still there regardless. You have mm -hmm. to face it. That's it. I mean, it's all about facing it. Once facing it comes, what's it? What is it going to do? If it, if it's if it's such a shadow, if we're looking at it with the light of our eyes, it can't be that dark anymore. Yeah, we don't even have to have any mechanisms to teach it. All we got to do is acknowledge it. Yeah. I tell people to give it a hug sometimes because sometimes their darkness gets a little close to mine and mm -hmm. I start empathizing a little too deeply. And I'm like, you better give him a hug. Yeah. You better give her a hug. Yeah. You know, um, my best friend is, you know, she's a Pisces. So there's a duality to her automatically by nature. Right. And so it's just all a part of me, man. <laughs> you know, my grandma died literally, uh, my birthday was yesterday. And so you're coming af after a time of inner vulnerability for me. Wow. So my, my floodgates are already open, ready to go, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, you know, she pretty much died 2004 after I got back from Iraq, yeah. um, a week after her birthday. Wow. And so, um, fun fact though, um, 326, 2004, all mm -hmm. those numbers were in order in her social security number. Wow. I'm not going to say the, the, the first no, two. No, but, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. yeah, but but <laughs> but the, her, her death date was inside her social security number. And I know mm -hmm. our community, African-American community, honestly, the community itself knows more about money than I do. Um, there's a lot of things why people can teach me about money. Um, just because they live in a life of poverty don't mean they don't understand. 
Yeah. And you know that that whole concept is is it's foreign to me. But you know, people really need to understand the materialism too. You know, right. and and what things truly mean. Right. You know. So I, I mean, think, it's 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 all it's all good though. No, and I think the most important thing is that you know you've been in a part of the world where material things was meaningless. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. found and, and people over there found purpose mm-hmm. um, just in community and just seeing that, you know, you don't need you, you don't need all those things. You don't. You know what I mean? It, especially when there's when there's love and happiness and all yeah. the feelings that people yearn for. Yeah, they, they kind of let it, you know, let it be up to the things, the materials to make those feelings happen when. Right. We just gotta, we just gotta look at it and think about how we want to feel. That's it. Right, and I you think know? too, and that's that's the one thing too, bro, is that we haven't let, we haven't been in a scenario where we have to look up up to the, the to to the sky if a bomb is gonna drop. We we we're 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 blessed to not live in that in that existence when that can mm-hmm. happen. You you were literally there where bombs were dropping. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mortar, like you have mortar. kids, yeah. kids that's playing outside and mistaking stars for missiles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. yep. I mean it it it's 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 the color of war, basically. You know what I mean? And and you know, it's there's just too many too much damn color. It really is. It's way too much color in, in war and Honestly, to tell you the truth, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for anything to pop off again. Because when that happens, guess whose voice is going to be the loudest? Yeah. Guess whose voice is going to... They want to try to fake us out with all these things yeah. to cause fear. Right. When they slip up and actually do something and I catch it, I'm going to be loud about it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I don't care who doesn't want to listen because they, they won't be able to deny what they see. Right. And that's the point where my truth becomes reality right there. I can already see it in the future. I can already see it. So yeah, you, and usually what happens is the ones that often who are speaking the most truth are often vindicate, vindicated after they, after their death. Basically that's, that's what I anticipate. <laughs> I, I don't anticipate this, this journey being done in any way on this planet. Like I'm going to find out, in whatever vapor I turn into, um, I, I'm I'm going to be aware of what's happening in the ether. Like I'm I'm already trying to f- get the feel of it, right. but it's no, nah, I'm I'm not going to disappear. Not this yeah. time. <laughs> no, 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 man, and I, bro, and and, the, and I'm, I'm gonna be a hundred with you. And I appreciate appreciate you coming on and just. Sharing your truth because often we mm-hmm. don't get the ugly side of war. Everyone always want to talk about, you know, they try to hide the, the 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 try to hide it. They try to make like it doesn't exist. They treat war like Call of Duty, mm-hmm. and that's and how the military did it. That's how they <laughs> did it. They cre- they created the environment for it to feel like that a lot. I'm right. talking about from basic training all the way all the way up all the way on to, to the war past it. Like they just would set these stages, the yeah. urban training. I like, I remember everything that they taught me because that's what saved my life. Right. And if and my life hasn't seen, if anybody's life truly doesn't really get to that extent, I'm going to make sure I remember that information. Right. I'm right. going to teach everybody, everybody correctly, how they are supposed to clear their own house. Right. All those things like TV ain't going to teach nobody. That's going to teach you how to get shot because right. I can pick it out. I can pick it like right. they can consult with a freaking cop all they want to do those scenes in the movie. Right. Right. But I pick out everything. Pow, pow, pow. There's a bullet to his head. Right. I can pick it all out between camera shots. Right. And, and and they're basically portraying it as if that's what you're supposed to do. And it's no, no. People need to actually go through these motions mechanically. And Ultimately, most of the veterans now, you know, they're they're either not worried about that that time, or they're probably on the street. You know what I mean? Like, there's a really big gap. This I'm I'm kind of the one in the middle. You know what I mean? I'm not living on the street, but I'm not like family man type. Right. 
Right. So the family guys, all they're going to do is protect their families with aggression. Right. You know, because the best defense is the greatest offense. Yes. And it works the other way around. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about them because ultimately they chose to not be flexible, right. to be limited. Right. Now they can't run to another area to avoid danger. Now they have to keep their kids in a home because they thought it was a comfort zone. Right. Now their reality gets blown because now there's people with masks like in the purge running in their house. You know what right. I mean? Like that stuff is going to happen because it mm. always happens. Right. <laughs> Everything that's been happening has always happened in the past. There's, there's go- I mean, eventually, people are going to have that little coup d'etat, the, the uprising. Right. And whether they're going to be the enemies of each other or not, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I know what happens in both scenarios, and it ain't good. No, no. Nope. And, I, and I think, um, man, this has been a dope conversation. We got to definitely do a part three, man. All but day. I, but I think one of the things that, um, I feel personally there's a d- disconnect to the people that haven't f- been in war to the people that haven't be- been in war. Like if you go back to, for example, like, you know, the war in Iraq or even mm-hmm. Afghanistan, mm-hmm. like there is, there, there was, and still there's a disconnect between like the, the uglies of war, you know, like, like if you go back to like World War Two or even Vietnam War, like mm-hmm. you, you, people felt it at home. You know, what I mean, even though you weren't there, you 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 felt like the pain and the suffering, and you understood yep. like what was going on. Like today, because of again, like we were talking about before, about like we look at like war as a video game. And so it's like you, we we lose that disconnect of how any war across the globe impact us. It may not yeah. impact us right now in the current, mm-hmm. but it, it does impact us all day, all day. And it's almost like like some of the war splashed on the people that aren't a part of it. It still gets there. Mm-hmm. And so if it if it if it if they don't have to be right next to it or be experiencing it and they could still feel the repercussions from it, the pain, I I don't see, I, there is no reason why no, why everybody should not be more aware of the war inside of themselves because that's, it's almost an external play of somebody else's inner war. And you can tag and you could tab that man. That that's a good one. Quote that. I (laughs) will. I will. <laughs> I've never said it, so you know, and it is. It's true. <laughs> no, <laughs> These no, things, it's, it's, <laughs> bro. It's facts, man. Facts, bro. Yeah, but yeah, bro. but people, people will understand because it is reality, and they can't deny what's been constantly recurring in history. It's just a matter of putting us, our own feelings, into that, and realizing how we feel about it. If we're so angry and we want to take vengeance, then vengeance is the darkness that that person should be trying to address. I'm not saying they're not supposed to feel those things. I'm just saying that they're not supposed to just completely react on that on that level without responding to their feelings. Because their feelings are going to tell them what's wrong or right or what feels best. Yeah. I, I should say what feels best. Um, so it's like, like it's, 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 war is raw. but 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 in order in order to to be in any type of inner or outer war um and i've never said this either you have to be you have to be really ready and willing you have to be ready and willing and that's the confrontation bro man i appreciate this time with you we're gonna do this again because i think this conversation needs to go on because mm-hmm. again, I don't think no one's having a conversation about like being honest about like the the ugly side of war and how it impacts everybody's life. The veteran, yeah. even someone that has never served, it impacts us because mm-hmm. we see it, we feel it, it's there. We yep. recognize it, and it yep. opens the, the dialogue of what does humanity mean 
to us in this current society. Yeah, that's exactly. And, and to me, to me, humanity means power. Mm. And I just do not know wh why I keep hearing this echo inside of me when I try to sleep at night. But I used to have a huge hatred for people, like not right. not people, but as a whole, like a unit right. and didn't want to have anything to do with any of them. But right. now I can have the utmost disdain for them and just, you know, laugh at them all I want. Right. But in reality, when 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 shit hits the fan, I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm there at that at that blade. I'm, I'm going to be face to face with whatever the person want doesn't want to deal with i don't know it's just right. me i like doing the dirty work you know it's just like the jobs that nobody wants to do i've always been that you know yeah. so it's and war just kind of i guess it was conditioning for the war <laughs> no, no 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 yeah man but um could be. no it could be <laughs> but one of my one of my favorite quotes is from one of my favorite rappers his name is uh ied um and um, one of his lines, he said, uh, "All is all existence are interdependent." So I'm gonna leave it like that. Let yeah. people just like marinate on that. <laughs> Seriously. Yep. Seriously. We have Bob in now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, brother, <laughs> brother, I appreciate you. Um, how can people yeah. find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Akai Sasari, uh, Instagram, same. Um, you can check out my podcast, uh, The Scorpions Den on Spotify. And, um, you know, it's, I, I think I go into some depth. You know, I just, I just went for it. It was like six, seven, eight hours long. Nice. So, podcast on the Spotify, like, I'm everywhere. You know, go to Blogspot and, Try to find awakened healing. You know, tag word the awakened healing. That's that's how you're going to get back to me. And just to let people uh, who's who's going to watch this episode, um, those links that will be in the description below, as well as the link from the first interview. So to be honest with you, before you watch this interview, you probably watched this interview already. But you know, uh, watch that first one. Watch, watch that, first, that one. first one, and then watch this again. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you for another amazing episode on this amazing podcast. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we're out. Peace. Yeah.